the deluge of fake pro-Ukrainian stories out there and a ban on Russian news sources on every major platform except Gab, it's got people wondering what the hell is really going on in Ukraine right now. As some of you might have noticed, every major pro-Ukrainian story making the rounds lately has turned out to be fake so far. The misinformation was bad. So bad, even Snopes had a report on it. The Ghost of Kyiv was footage from a video game. And it was not only pushed out by the verified Twitter account for Ukraine, but it's still up. No retraction, no explanation. Like, how would a government entity even get that wrong? That Russian tank that ran over a car? Turns out it's not Russian. It's actually a Ukrainian Strela 10 anti-aircraft armored vehicle, and it's being driven by a man in Ukrainian uniform. Turns out it was just an accident or something. But as this guy pointed out, did people really think Russia sent a lone tank to take over a city? Then there's Snake Island, where Ukrainian soldiers supposedly told the Russians to F off before they bombed them and 13 of them died heroically. Except that didn't happen at all. They surrendered and there were actually 82 of them. In fact, here they are. This video of Ukraine firing anti-aircraft missiles at Russian planes is from a video game called War Thunder. This viral video of an explosion supposedly at a power plant in Ukraine is from a factory fire in China in 2015. This jet Ukraine supposedly shot down is from a crash in 2017. This explosion in Ukraine was actually the ammonium nitrate catastrophe in Beirut two years ago. These Ukrainian war scenes it's just more video game footage. This supposed Russian missile is actually from a rocket attack in Iraq last month on our own embassy. This Russian MiG flyby is from an air show. The raising of the Russian flag on Ukrainian soil is from 2015. These touching pictures of Ukrainian soldiers saying goodbye is from a movie. A movie! What the hell is going on here? Weeks ago, no one even understood why this administration wanted to defend the borders of a foreign country when they won't even protect their own southern border. The United States remains firmly committed to Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity in the face of Russian aggression. Now, after weeks of fake news and pro-war propaganda, everybody is standing with Ukraine, wanting to send them money and weapons, which will end up God knows where. I must have seen about 50 different stories about people dumping out Russian vodka that they've already paid for in some weird mass empty virtue signaling event. And if you even try to point any of this out to people, they'll accuse you of being pro-Putin and a Russian bot. Did we all just forget the lies our government and media peddled about COVID the last two years? In case you missed it, because only alternative media reported on it, Pfizer was just forced to release its testing. You know the info they wanted to hold on to for 75 years before releasing. And it turns out there are nine pages of over 1,200 serious adverse reactions to their vaccine. And those are just the short-term effects. I didn't even know that gastrointestinal herpes was a thing. And it turns out our government spent $1 billion of our own tax money paying the mainstream media to shove it down our throats this entire time knowing there was nowhere near the amount of testing done needed before being released to the public as safe. Don't report on the biggest global scandal to ever occur in our lifetimes or anything. Nah, not when you can push for a nuclear war to distract everybody from the fact our compromised, corporate-owned and controlled government just poisoned everybody for big farmer profit while censoring, banning, and flagging anyone who disagreed with them for misinformation the last two years even though we were right about it the whole freaking time. When the media, leftist Hollywood celebrity douchebags, and deep state pawns like Pelosi and others are all pushing for something, it ain't good. You want to know what Ukraine is really about? Let me tell you a story. Back in 2014, corrupt U.S. officials backed by money from Soros, because, of course, ushered in a color revolution and a political coup in Ukraine to install a government they could control and make money off of. Ukrainians died so our disgustingly corrupt Congress could steal their resources and launder U.S. tax monies they already stole through us through their relatives. Again, this is not a conspiracy theory. You can look all of this up and I encourage you to do so. 
Oliver Stone did a very informative documentary on what the deep state was doing there that I recommend you check out to better understand things. It is not an accident that it's the same country Biden is on video admitting he withheld a billion of U.S. aid to until they fired the prosecutor that was going after his crackhead son's corrupt company Burisma. And I went over, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev and... Uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had, they were walking out to the press conference, said, no, nah, I said, I'm not going to, or, or we're not going to give you the billion dollars. They said, you have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Don't forget that 10% to the big guy. Even fake fact checkers had to admit that Biden said that because, well, it's on video. But they said that the reasoning behind it was just coincidental. It was the same prosecutor going after his son. <laughs> oh, okay. Zelensky was actually a comedian that played the president of Ukraine on TV and he ended up getting pushed through to become the real president by the usual shady oligarch types without so much as doing a single rally, public speech, or meet and greet. Until Zelensky answers for the millions of dollars he has in offshore bank accounts, I'm gonna have a hard time believing anything that comes out of his mouth. Now back to Russia. Putin doesn't want NATO on his border. NATO is anti-Russian and they're just as corrupt as every other global entity in the world. They're also notorious for killing civilians in false flag events just to push their own agenda. Since the 90s, Russia was promised by our government that NATO would not expand not one inch to the east, which fake fact checkers will claim is false, even though the documents supporting that agreement have been released by several other countries already. That agreement was definitely broke numerous times by allowing NATO expansion to Romania, Poland, Hungary, Czech, Bulgaria, and of course right now on the border with Ukraine. It's like that time Americans were mad because Canada was allowing communist Chinese troops to train near our border, which they completely denied up and down. But then Global Affairs Canada was mad when the training had to stop. So <laughs> obviously they were training Chinese troops in Canada. Anyway, while mainstream outlets were claiming that the Ukraine invasion was completely unprovoked, according to Putin's statements, he went into specifically demilitarized zones that were never supposed to be militarized in the first place. He also makes claims that citizens there, many of whom are Russian, were facing violence and genocide from political groups and militias in the area. That, I don't know. Only the people living there can say. In my research into it, though, I did find it interesting that a mass grave was uncovered but was dismissed by fact checkers as nothing more than an illegal burial ground full of people that all happened to die at the same time, which, yeah, maybe someone should look into that. Clearly, something's going on in Ukraine. And just like with COVID, the media is falling it all into the same weird and undeniable lockstep just to push a narrative. You've got dozens of fake stories coming out by the Ukrainian press and government. They're blocking Russian news and banning any posts that point this out. You've got Lindsey Graham, who's a sitting U.S. senator, calling for the mob to murder the leader of a foreign country, which I'm sure has nothing to do with the coup he helped with in Ukraine with that warmongering son of a bitch McCain. It begs the question, though. What are our corrupt politicians so terrified that Putin will find there that they're willing to start World War III to hide it? And that is what will happen if these robber barons get their way. Yeah, we know they're laundering money, but why would foreign countries care some other countries ripping off their own people? Then the news of having bioweapon labs broke. Oh, now that would grab the attention of another concerned global power now, wouldn't it? Funny thing is that after a few posts went viral asking why Department of Defense was funding a dozen or more illegal bioweapon labs with their own tax money, our upright and outstanding government decided to scrub the websites of any evidence of them but not before people could download and archive them for safekeeping. Oops. Tori Newland is now Joe Biden's undersecretary of state in charge of Ukraine, and she knows a lot about Ukraine. In 2014, Tori Newland engineered a coup in Ukraine in the name of democracy, of course. So she is a highly informed source about Ukraine. 
So she was having this colloquy with Senator Marco Rubio of Florida during her testimony. And at one point, Rubio took a tack that we were not expecting at all. He asked Newland if Ukraine had biological weapons. We never imagined Ukraine would have biological weapons. Why would Ukraine have bioweapons? So it seemed like a pretty strange question. But it wasn't half as shocking as the answer he got. Watch what Toria Newland said. Does Ukraine have chemical or biological weapons? Uh, Ukraine has uh, biological research facilities, which, in fact, we are now quite concerned Russian troops, Russian forces may be seeking to uh, gain control of. So we are working with the Ukrainians on how they can prevent any of those research materials from falling into the hands of uh, Russian forces should they approach. Does Ukraine have biological weapons? Uh, Ukraine has biological research facilities. What? You mean secret biolabs? Like the secret biolabs Ukraine definitely doesn't have? Ukraine has those? Yes, it does. And not only does Ukraine have secret biolabs, Toria Newland said, whatever they're doing in those labs is so dangerous and so scary that she is, quote, quite concerned that the so-called research material inside those biolabs might fall into the hands of Russian forces. Try not to use profanity on the air to describe our reaction. Our jaws drop. Let's leave it there. You think COVID was bad? These people were working on hemorrhagic fever, anthrax, aerosolized rabies, and the plague. The plague! Then in a shocking moment of truth, our State Department, after initially denying it, begrudgingly admits, because Russia was at their doorstep, that yes, we do have biological labs full of all kinds of fatal apocalyptic diseases there, but that they were only there for defensive purposes. Oh, I bet. Just like Fauci tried to claim that manipulating a coronavirus to be more deadly and contagious had nothing to do with gain of function or creating a bioweapon. It was just to learn something and oops, it got out and killed a bunch of people. Our government lied to us. Like, more than usual. They lied to the world, and they're gonna have to answer for that. They're only reluctantly just admitting it now because Russia found the labs. Anyway, Putin is now asking the UN Security Council to look into the military biological activities our country was illegally committing on foreign soil against a world treaty for doing such things. And while I have little faith in the accountability of the UN as it is, airing our corrupt government sins on a world stage might just be the only hope we have to wake up the masses to the evil our government has committed and was about to commit some more. I feel for the Ukrainian people, I really do. But I assure you, American intervention will only escalate the death toll and destruction of their beautiful country by turning it into ground zero. Killing people for profit is what the military industrial complex does. This isn't the first time our government, or the people controlling them, I should say, used propaganda and fake news to encourage a war for their political and monetary gains, or in this case, to cover them up. But this can be the last time it happens. But only if we start learning to question everything we know and everything we see from here on out.